Um, so it's a, uh, what we're going to show you is a project that is a um, huge collaboration from many, many people, starting with three institutions, Parsons New School for Design, and our partner within the New School, Milano, uh, which is our urban policy and finance group, and then Stevens Institute of Technology uh, across the river in Hoboken. Um, we got together to enter into the solar, 2011 Solar Decathlon, and, um, but uh, decided to take it on in a, a very collaborative way, um, and even on overdrive. Um, so this is our curriculum map that shows all the different disciplines that actually worked on the project. And uh, you know, coordinating and collaborating um, between all the students was a key part of the project for us. Um, but then we couldn't uh, stop there. We had to make it more complicated. Um, so we, in addition to that, decided we needed to uh, make this project real and work with uh, our community members um, down in DC. And so we um, went into a partnership with the Department of Housing and Community Development in Washington, Habitat for Humanity. And um, in addition to that, we also had um, worked collaboratively with many sponsors, so the Solar Decathlon being one of the key ones, but we had other very generous sponsors to help us with funding the project, and many, many more generous um, in-kind gifts. Um, and so some of them here today, National Fiber, Intus Window, and Zender, um, were just some of the people who helped um, us build this beautiful home. Um, and probably the most important partner for us uh, with the project was uh, the community itself. So we worked uh, very closely with members from the Deanwood community, which is a neighborhood on the edge of Washington, D.C. So just a little bit about Habitat for Humanity um, in Washington, D.C. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with how Habitat functions, but we uh, work as an affiliate-based organization. So we have Habitat for Humanity International is the umbrella organization, and we all work very regionally and locally. Um, so we all work very differently from each other in many ways. Um, in DC, we are working in four of the uh, eight wards um, of the city. Um, currently, right now, we're working in Ward 5 and Ward 7, uh, Deanwood being the neighborhood where the powerhouse is, and we're also focused um, up in Ward 5 in the Ivy City neighborhood. Um, since 1988, we've built um, nearly 150 homes. How we build um, Habitat is a volunteer organization. Um, so on our construction sites, we use a combination of volunteers, homeowners, um, trades, and staff. Um, on average, we work with about 4,000 volunteers, um, and we have a construction staff of about four uh, full-time staff members. And we work with AmeriCorps, um, the AmeriCorps program. Uh, we have about six AmeriCorps that are with us for 11 months on our construction staff. Um, and then we work with our regular and, um, our, we have regular crew leaders and then um, daily volunteers. In terms of funding, we have a mixed source of government funding um, and private and corporate sponsorship. Um, which is either financial or gift in kind um, contributions. Um, and an interesting note, um, in 2010, HFHI was ranked as the sixth largest builder in the US, combined collectively. Our homeowners, who do we, um, who are our clients? Um, Habitat for Humanity is a home purchasing program. Um, we have three main criteria for our homeowners. The ability to, or need, ability to pay, and a willingness to partner. Um, so for need, they must um, qualify for, or they must be a low-income resident. Uh, we're working with a population that's 30 to 60% of the AMI in DC. And the, tip, uh, the AMI area medium income in DC is about 102,000. So um, a population between thir making 30 to 60,000, <laughs> depending on the number of, of um, dependents in their family. Um, ability to pay. They contribute a $500 deposit um, along with their sweat equity hours, um, but they also have to have good credit, um, good financial backing to um, support a mortgage, and a willingness to partner. Um, Habitat homeowner really becomes a part of our community 
they work 300 hours, um, which we call sweat equity, on our construction sites with alongside our staff and volunteers. So about this, around the same time we started working with the Parsons School for Design, uh, Habitat was getting interested in building more energy efficient homes. In 2009, we started with Earthcraft, um, the Earthcraft program in Virginia, um, building a uh, tier two of their program home, um, changing our framing practice and insulation practices and um, sizing our HVAC systems um, a little bit more properly. We continued in 2010 and 11 um, with that same standard Earthcraft um, home. Uh, in 2011, uh, we started working with green communities as well um, through our government funding. And we decided to make one of our eight uh, new construction units uh, lead silver certified as well. In 2012, we are working now with Parsons um, on the Empower House, building two uh, passive house uh, uh, Passive houses, and we are working. In, we're in the design process of building six more passive house units. So overall, we um, by 2013, you have worked on 25 different homes, kind of under our green building program. So as we've become more in 2009, we started working um, on an. Uh, a green building program. We started talking to Parsons and we wanted to sort of develop um, our green building understandings, our understandings of energy efficiency. So as we started getting more innovative with our design, our energy efficiency obviously went down. Or went up. <laughs> so, um, so uh, again, in order to do this project, uh, it, it became a, a very complex design problem for our students. Um, they had to first design for the mall, so on, the, on your left hand side, your left hand side? Um, is a, a, a depiction of the, of the house that situated itself on the mall as a one story, one bedroom house. But they also at the same time were designing to make this house turn it into a two story, two unit, two, a duplex. And they couldn't stop there. They also um, worked with the community to build a local community garden right around the street uh, so that what we learned from the project could be um, shared with the community. And learning uh, you know, is uh, important for our students, but it's been important for all of our partners. So one of our goals was you know, to be able to find a partner like Habitat for Humanity Washington, D.C., who was game to really learn with us. And um, in fact, they came along with us to all of our trainings um, and now are uh, um, really true partners in, in this project. So Deanwood is an interesting neighborhood in, uh, in Washington. Its um, average income inhabited uh, has $30,000 uh, um, salary and, um, for a family. And um, the, the, um, one of the interesting things about, well, there was, uh, we, we thought a nice fact, Lady Bird Johnson actually kicked off the City Beautiful movement in Deanwood, um, partially because it's a community that really cares about itself. It's a historically African-American community um, that has sees itself as self-reliant. And that, that idea of self-reliance that they, um, they bring to, they, they brought to the project was something that our students worked with. So we started again uh, um, with trying to create a very compact um, unit uh, for energy efficient reasons and again working first with a modular construction from the mall and then uh, site built construction down in Deanwood um, incorporated um, various passive house um, strategies added things like porches in order to relate to the community and then included on that um, other uh, sustainable strategies so the home is not just equipped with passive house, it's equipped, um, it's designed to be a site net zero house. And in addition to that, um, the, we set it up so the homeowners could grow their own food. And we actually have set up a program that will, um, where we will be uh, training the homeowners over a three year period. Um, so again, passive over active was the main um, <coughs> uh, strategy that the team used. 
and we spent a lot of time uh, working on that. We were very lucky to have a couple amazing faculty members on our staff. David White, who many of you know, was the lead energy faculty for the students. Um, Ed May, who's an incredible um, builder and architect. Um, and David Lewis, uh, also design architect. And then finally, Chris Steffens, who was um, in charge of our lighting and controls. Um, so, but the students learned how to, how to do things like passive house planning package, but also they learned how to do therm, and they uh, weren't very happy with the, the interface of PHPP, so they in invented, a, with using Grasshopper, um, a way of uh, 3D modeling, and in um, running the 3D model, it would populate the PHP cells. It wasn't a very stable um, project, uh, that is, if you tried to do it on another, um, model, it would, it, it would take some time, but it was a really great exploration students went through. So um, bottom line was we designed the, the two houses to meet passive house standards. So uh, for all of the energy modeling, we we're at 4.62 kVT per square foot annual. And um, our primary energy is, is down to 27.9. So this is what it looked, this was the rendering of what it was supposed to look like on the model. Hmm. This is what it, is that squished? Hmm. Okay, that, <laughs> from my point of view, um, this is what it, this is what it looked like on the wall. Uh, daytime and nighttime. Back where many people spent time gathering, and side yard where it shows something of our uh, rainwater strategy. But and this is uh, Lekeel Colley. She is the homeowner candidate for the project and um, the main again impetus for the. She's one of the two homeowners, so she will um, be purchasing the Empower House side of the duplex, and we're still working on the second homeowner. Oops. So this is a rendering of what it's going to look like when it's complete on the Dean Royal site. So another um, element of the project is the low impact design. Um, the Parsons School uh, worked with the Dep uh, District Department of Environment on a bioswell concept for the government strip 